Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're starting a new series called Women in Leadership. I'm going to try my best to get as many women from around the world to join us and to participate in this series. Today we have with us a very exceptional and inspirational person. Her name is Margaret Payetta. She is currently the Director of Strategic Accounts and the Chief Marketing Officer at Fisher Block Incorporated. So let's go and talk to Margaret. Hi, Margaret. How are you? Doing very well. How are you doing? I'm good too. Thanks for being here. Um, I'm going to start out the interview by asking you to uh, give us an introduction about yourself. Tell us about your journey. Who is Margaret and how did you end up working for Fisher Block? Well, um, I'm from California. Um, I uh, went to the graduated from the University of Santa Clara with a Bachelor of Science. And I focused in both with a, a focus in both psychology and computer science. So they had just, this is a while ago, just been bringing uh, computer science about. Um, but my first job out of college was in um, computer science. So I uh, was a software developer, um, nice. with government contracts. We had uh, B-52 bombers, Apache helicopters, even some uh, war simulation type wow. contracts. So to the end of women in the workforce, I was the first female they hired. Um, now, because it, not because they had to, it wasn't a quota. Mm -hmm. uh, it was, you know, I was fortunate enough. I interviewed and I got the job. That sounds so great. Wow, you're amazing. So um, in your profile, I was checking your profile and I saw that you started some ventures of your own as well. And um, so I want to ask you that as a female entrepreneur in historically male dominated industries, um, have you faced any unique challenges? Maybe you could share an instance where you overcame some uh, gender related barriers or stereotypes because you work in very male dominated areas, even for the US. Right, yes. Um, and I mentioned earlier when uh, I worked in engineering and there were no women or just a few. I remember mm -hmm. another woman was hired. I'm like, oh, I have another one. Um, <laughs> so I, I, I did face harassment, you know, some uh, you know, verbal comments or, you know, some physical, you know, light. But, you know, I, I uh, but I moved on. It wasn't, you know, like assaulting, just some issues that um, were not called for. But you just keep moving forward. And that was back in the 80s. I mean, this is this is a yeah. while ago. So um, since that time, but you just keep forward, you know, brush, brush it off, move, move in a forward direction. And then um, after, after I worked for that one company in those government contracts, I was fortunate enough to work for this um, Man, his, I'll say his name, Scott Bishens. He was a um, in the garment industry, and so I learned that trade. And he was not afraid to promote talent from within. So I was able to work with him closely. I automated his business almost primarily by uh, manual. I ran the IT for that company, and I was able to, as a result of working with him um, closely see his business making skills. So again, I was fortunate you know, because he promoted within to, to see how he made decisions and I could learn from those decisions. Um, and then his wife, uh, I was came friendly with too and she helped me through some personal challenges. And as a result, when I was then moved on from that company, um, I started my own actual uh, sports line. So maybe you saw that casual yes. American yes, I did. sports warehouse. Mm -hmm. So I was used to working with um, the contractors that I worked with, that he worked with. And so the name casual American sports warehouse, um, I would just tell them, you know, make the check out to cash because it's 
C A S H. So my、uh, customers got a kick out of that.、Right. And、um, anyway, so that's how I had that. And then I, I、um, as far as how I got with、uh, Fisher Block, there I met a team of people who、um, you know, we came up with this company and kind of pooled our skills together. I had worked with more soccer, but I mentioned the dual major and. Kind of always been focused on the user experience of what we do, so that's kind of then how then marketing and then now even working with the software,、um, how the user how it interfaces with the user and the user engages and learns from what we do. Right, right. So、um, you know, you said you just move on, right?、Uh, when there is some sort of an instance where you face. Verbal or any kind of abuse、uh, in the workplace, you say you move on. So, did you ever complain to anybody, or did you have somebody you could talk to about it? Yeah. So, excellent points to go back to that. Yes, I did. So, and, and way back、um, at that one company when I was harassed, I did report it to my boss, and he was. You know, it was hard. How do you handle this? There, you know, it was a male, and he's like, "Oh, you know," it, he was uncomfortable.、Mm-hmm. Um, but it was, I didn't have to deal with it. I didn't. It, nothing was brought up formally. I didn't have to handle it again. And I really trusted my boss,、um, okay. and it didn't go any further. But I knew I, you know, I had trust with him.、Okay. And the other one,、um, I didn't engage with the company. It was actually in a job interview,、um, and it was. Rather large company. Who,、um, when I went on the interview, he like kisses me on the cheek. In there, it's like okay.、Um, so I left. I left the interview.、Um, okay. That's how I moved on. <laughs> okay. So I'm glad we、uh, went over how you moved on because、uh, you know there are lots of people who would be watching this interview and would want to know. What to do in a situation like that, and with all your experience and your、uh, insights into everything, you know, it's it it would be nice to know how to handle, and that's that's how. Well, you you, you had mentioned your teacher,、um, so it's very helpful to have mentors. Yes. Or good good people in leadership. I, I, I mentioned、um, the Bishons, you know, Scott and his wife,、um, each in their own way. And he was in a leadership role, so that,、wow. and then his wife、um, helping me. I, I, I was blessed. I was fortunate. I could、you、say were, anything, yes, and、were. they made me feel important. You know, they really made me feel like like a, a, a good person. You know,、uh, a strong person. They valued my opinions. And right. Those are all part of helping you propel forward, and then. You、Absolutely. you become sensitive to other people, and you kind of pick up on when when they are kind of off.、Mm-hmm. You, you know, then you give support and strength. Yes. yes. So yes.、Um, so you were very、yeah. lucky that you had that kind of support because, frankly, I have in my experience seen these things going really wrong, where you、mm-hmm. go to the management or you go and tell somebody about it, and then it's just used. In against、gender. basically,、yeah. right? Yeah. Yes. Because I have actually seen somebody get fired, even though everybody in the office knew that she was being harassed.、Mm-hmm. But you know, it just worked out like that. So、mm-hmm. one wonders if one should actually go and say anything or not. You know, there is that conflicting thing there because yes, you don't know which way it's going to go. You were lucky that you got support. I was lucky that I got support. But you know, there are many people who don't、Correct. get that support, and then which is why I don't judge too. When when you read in the paper, it's easy to sensationalize something and say,、right. "Oh, how could that woman have endured that?" I'm like, until you walk in her shoes, I would never judge. You don't know what she's having to put up with. Absolutely. So. Um, yeah, those are excellent points. And then to to find a good therapist, I am definitely promote that. But a, a good therapist, good, you know, they're a field just like any other field. You have good ones and not so good ones, right?、Um, right. But an excellent therapist goes a long way. Okay, that's a great point.、Um, so I'm just going to move to the next question now about. 
women in leadership roles and on decision making tables do you think i mean we all know that we live in a male dominated world um and it is harder for women they have to maybe work harder in some instances to get to a position but do you think that the way women think or the way they take things lightly sometimes maybe they are also at fault if they're not reaching leadership positions is there a lack of ambition or are they well, not um, focused it's interesting so you said the way if they don't if they lack ambition then i think they don't want that job and maybe they're better in another job i think um just like a guy you know if he's not doing so well i i, I think he's in the wrong position too right. i think if you have a a female who's driven and who is skilled in the area she is focusing in she's tough you know just like you're pursuing no matter what you you and you have it inside you you i i put my money on that female because she'll find a way right um, right now so, as far as um percentages too or it seems like it's um male dominated world it's primarily in the area like in the engineering it's mainly um men let's so let's say it's uh uh out of 10 3 are female and uh, 7 are male um in the then the leadership positions would have to reflect that same percentage percentage then you know there would be fewer leaders you know proportionately to the ratio of the gender i hear a lot these days and i read a lot about um people saying that you know women are not brought up to think that they can actually go and join the engineering field or the energy field or become a carpenter or or whatever you know the male dominated areas so to speak so is that true do you think I think that was the case but not now so in the US you would say it's not the case now i would say that okay i would say definitely was when i was started out but I will say like all the marketing I see and you know whatever the motive is behind it but you you have females under those hard hats if you look everywhere okay. um so that maybe they're doing that for the comfort level now if there are that many women there maybe they don't want they don't like that field so that's maybe why they're not in it but um you know I bump into some women and they're awesome in the field um right and I treat them as the same and I and I think people treat me equally when we're in the field. If anything, okay. you know, women tend to have a greater attention to detail. So, yes. you know, and and I'm I am being stereotypical there, but in this industry in our industry it's helpful. Yeah. So, you know, they'll know I'll pick up the slack. I just, you know, I just be you know, I mean, it's got to be correct. It's got to be right. right and and uh, i'm not sure if you'll be able to tell me this but um while we're talking about this i just want to know in the us do you think there are enough women at the top level in in decision making positions where they're actually influencing the policies that are being made in the united states different policies all kinds of policies like because uh the reason i'm asking this is because i believe that if there aren't both genders are not represented on the table then uh the perspective of women is not going to be covered by men because we do think differently we are made differently and we act differently and we have different issues that we are concerned about so if women are not being represented at at the decision making tables their uh their uh ideas or their thinking is not going to come through in the policies right that won't be properly right. represented right so do you think it's like <laughs> that in in the US this goes back to hiring based on a quota or hiring based on skill and if the and no matter what if you're going to put a man there or a female there let's just take that example if if you're putting a man there who is not qualified then decisions will be poor and it's not going to be good the same with the female just because the female is in that position her decisions will be poor and the outcome will be poor of the business or or the policy it 
and it's, so it's unfortunate when it's policies because then you know I'll I'll be upset because I'm like you know who are you representing here you know you better represent the women and you know so I'm very pro women I didn't know this is where it was going to go the um, interview but pro um, smart thinking women and empowering women just to to uh, stand up for yourself just like you were saying for the right reasons right and it truly makes sense to you and it isn't to look good on a Facebook page or on Absolutely. some media it's something that you could stand up on a building and fight for with no social media well said that's what needs to happen right. so we I, I and and I think no matter what the job is so when you have a, a male in that position the I think it just shines you, you know your heart moves with those people and the same with females so are there enough out there um I think this I think I want more and more so there's okay. some there's some really strong good ones and you know there's some not so good ones just like the ratio as I mentioned with the men so the more we keep going the more I think we're going to get that ratio better women in leadership right Right, I agree. I agree. Would you like to give some advice to aspiring women who are either stepping into the uh, workforce or they are about to start their business or they want to start their business but don't know where to go, where to start? Hmm. Okay. So just entering the workforce, awesome. Um, no matter where you're going, I, I, it's funny you even mentioned that. I buying groceries the other day and this woman was just calm or you know the older girl the young lady was just coming on how she wants things and she's um, here you know my job and starting to earn her own money and buy her own things and I don't know her background I I was just like you can do it you know I was just happy to see where I don't know where she was but she was happy to be standing there to start building and then I just said, whatever you want, then you're starting now. This is your first step. And then, you know, I'm sure the person behind me in line wanted me to go on and leave. But I was just <laughs> really happy that she was just embracing and moving ahead. And, and whatever the job is, just keep going and step and, and be happy. And that's your future. And just keep going. Just keep going. Now, right. that was the one getting it going into the workforce. And try to get something that you like. Um won't won't be the end all but to do well uh, as i mentioned um dual major in computer science and psychology an important thing i learned in psychology was consonants your mind and your body really have to be the same to to move forward so if you're doing something you don't like your mind can't you know you can't your body can't do great if your mind doesn't like it it just doesn't happen so That's right. pick an area that you like and your body will follow and you'll move ahead. So that's my suggestion there. Now, as far as starting your own business, um, don't quit that day job until <laughs> you can um, have enough funds, uh, you know, get things moving first. Let it be self-running because you don't then want to be beholden to whoever's giving you money in that area or and, and investors, et cetera, can be rough Then you're just then you're not doing the business. You're more like you're back in a new, new area that you're going to hate. So right. have, don't quit that day job, get enough going, but don't, great advice. don't not do it. Yeah. Don't right. not move ahead. Right. That was a double negative, but um, do it tonight, <laughs> you know, work with other people. So move right. ahead, get your passions um, and smile. I like just, you just smile right then. That, it, that just moves mountains. Well said. Oh, and, and consonants. See, that's another, I mentioned the consonants. You smile so your body's going to follow you. you know, be happy and work better. Very true. Very true. So thank you so much, Margaret. Thank you so you're much welcome. for taking the time out. I know you're a busy woman and you made the time. You came here and you gave your suggestions and your advice and your insights to us. Thank you so much. I truly appreciate it.
Well, thank you for having me. And I look forward to talking with you again. Absolutely. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you made it to the end, you are the best. Make sure to leave us a comment below telling us what you thought of the interview or if you have any questions or suggestions. I would love to hear from you. Also, if you learned anything from this video or if you would like to see more videos like this one, then please give us a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much once again and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.